one name everybody knows in the world of gaming, and that just so happens to be Super Mario. Everybody who is a gamer, whether you love Super Mario, you hate it, you've never even played it, doesn't matter, you actually know who Mario is. He pretty much is the quintessential video game character, an icon. He spans generation after generation just basically making awesome games. Well, just so happens that they released something with Mario's face on it, and I, as a hardcore fan of the franchise and a big fan of Nintendo, am none too happy about it. Just so happens to be the Super Mario All-Stars 25th Anniversary Edition. Now, you might be wondering, why would you be unhappy about something like that? I mean, it's Mario celebrating his 25th anniversary, and you're getting a bunch of games. You know, normally, I would say you're absolutely correct, but here's the thing. This is one of the laziest fucking cash-ins I have ever fucking seen. And it pisses me off because I feel that for $30, that this is way, way, way overpriced. And I'm going to go into detail about that, you know, piece by piece right now. One of the reasons why I feel that the game is kind of lazy is because essentially this is what the game is. That's Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo. I got this game when I was in grade school, okay? This was awesome when it came out. And the irony behind it is that you could send a little little piece of like paper away to Nintendo and they mailed it to you for free. I got this game for free. This is the copy I had when I was little. I got this for free. Okay, this has Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, and a Lost Levels, which is the original Super Mario Bros. 2. Most people know that. They also updated the graphics. That's a lot of stuff to be able to get for free. And it was on your SNES. That's amazing. Now, also, you can get all these games on the virtual console just by downloading them. And, oddly enough, you can get all of them and be cheaper. Well, this right here includes all of it in one package, but doesn't upgrade anything at all. I mean, what about the advanced version of Super Mario Bros. 2 that they released on Game Boy Advance that had all the upgrades? Why isn't that on there instead? I mean, that offered a whole lot more stuff on it. Did they include that? No. We just got the regular ass version on that. What about Super Mario Bros. 3? That was also re-released on the Game Boy Advance with a whole ton of new features. Why not include that? Oh yeah, that's right. They didn't. Instead, they just took the ROMs. They took, lazily, mind you, the ROMs. Put them onto a disc. There you go. That's all that you get. Wow. That's a whole fuck ton of work. Basically, it cost them nothing. Nothing to do that. What pisses me off more about it is that not only is this just Super Mario All-Stars that's been out for years and years and years, but they have all this stuff readily available on the virtual console. So essentially, they're not giving us anything extra as far as like gameplay goes. I mean, what about like Super Mario World, Super Mario 64? What about Super Mario what about like Super Mario Kart? You know, there's like all the different Super Mario games that are beyond just like the platformers. What about Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island? Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo? You know, there's all the Mario Party games. There's tons of games that they could have included on there because the DVD fits, what, 4.7 gigabytes on it? Okay. The ROMs take up nothing on it. Absolutely fucking nothing. All right. <laughs> A regular Mario is like, what, in the kilobytes? Like, it's such a small file size. Like, it barely exists. Okay. And then you have Super Mario 2 and 3. Again, they don't take up any room. So you have all that space for what? Nothing. It's fucking empty. You have a great big disc just filled with nothing on it. You know, this was like, this is well beyond a missed opportunity to me. Because, number one, you're celebrating the 25th anniversary of your flagship character, the one that basically, like, every single person in the world knows, and there is tons of fans out there, including me, and, I mean, we were like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna run out and go get this, which I did. This is what I got. This is what I got. Oh, wait, no, this is what I got, except for it was in much nicer packaging, but... Here's the thing. I can't go and say, well, you know, it's just those games. Ah. See, when you get it, this is what you get. Shows you right on the back exactly what you're get what you're getting. You know, again, four classic Mario games on one disc. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Well, 
You also get this. This is the extra right here. Now, get a closer look at that. And on the back, kind of hard to read that, so I do apologize. But uh, essentially, this is soundtrack to Super Mario Brothers. And it comes with this right here, Super Mario Brothers History. Now, I thought that this was going to be pretty nice, and I was looking through it, and it's not that bad, but keep in mind that this thing right here doesn't even scratch the surface. I'll try to zoom this in a little bit. I'm just hoping it focuses. If you see those little uh, icons down there beside the Super Nintendo controller, all right, those are quotes from some of the main people, like Iwata and Shigeru Miyamoto, who basically give like a sentence, okay, just just like one sentence about Super Mario World. That's that's all that we get to hear them say. It's just one sentence. Wow. Okay, some of the masterminds, some of like gaming's finest, we're only gonna hear one sentence out of a landmark title. That's a crock of shit. You know, the, what we should really be getting is something more along the lines of, like, a history of them actually working on the franchise, you know, behind the scenes, understandings of the development cycle of it, you know, all the different things that they had actually devoted to that particular title, or things that they had overseen. Not just, yeah, it was a pretty awesome game. What the fuck is that? That, that's all that we're going to hear? Any jack-off can fucking, like, say that. No, these are the dudes that actually made it. These are the ones that made the legendary games that we obsess over and that we praise and that we play and that we love to death. And we finally get something, you know, that we get to read and be like, oh, man, we're really going to get something that's going to, like, give us some kind of in-depth, like, look into the game in the minds of the developers that made it. Oh, wait, no, we're not. We're just getting a half-assed opinion. Whoop the fucking do. That's so awesome. No, it's not. It's lazy. Okay, there's no way that this is all somebody has to say about Super Mario Bros. 2. Right down here? I mean, Super Mario Bros. 2, I would love to hear more about the actual history of it. I mean, that Super Mario Bros. 2 isn't even the real Super Mario 2. You know, I'd like to hear, well, what was their logic and reasoning deciding to change it and not bring it to the States and everything? Why did they decide to take that one particular title, you know? Why did they decide to make the advanced version on Game Boy Advance? What was their ideas behind doing that? Was there any ideas that was left out? I mean, there's a ton of stuff, you know, that they could be including. They're not. And it's a bunch of bullshit. Then you have the soundtrack. Okay, the soundtrack literally has, like, one song from every Mario game on it. That That's it. So some of the legendary soundtracks, which one of which... Mario 64 is one of my favorite video game soundtracks ever in existence. I think it's one of the best soundtracks I just ever heard. When I was little, I thought it was really awesome. I didn't even give a shit about music when I was younger. You know, I heard it. I was like, man, this is really cool stuff. You know, everybody knows all the songs in Super Mario Brothers. The very first one, there, everybody knows that. How many people do you know that has the Super Mario Brothers ringtone? Okay, even people that don't even really play it, they like that. Why? Because it's fucking catchy, and it's really awesome. Okay, that disc could have held all, all of those songs easily from the first Super Mario Bros. Why not include all those? You know, whenever I see soundtracks get included with anything, I'm pretty happy because I enjoy a lot of video game music. This was just fucking lazy. Wow, one song from each. You know, because there's just that one song that is better than the rest. We don't want, like, multiple songs or anything. It's a fucking thing that just should have been better, and it wasn't. It was just, you know, here you go, sprinkle a little little couple tunes in there, and just call it a fucking day. Yeah, yeah, fan-fucking-tastic. So glad that we got one song from each game. <laughs> no, I'm not. I think it's fucking, like, lame as shit. Okay, they could have fit a lot more into that, and considering the fact that there's tons of RPGs, the special editions of them, that include soundtracks that have, like, every single fucking song, why couldn't this? 25th fucking anniversary? You're goddamn right they should include a lot more stuff into it, but do they? No, they don't. Why? Because it was a lot more fucking cost-effective to not do that. Okay, I'm gonna go for a couple things that they could have added to this. O onto that DVD. 
that literally would have fit with no problem. They could have made them unlockables. They could have just made them available from the start. They were things that would not cost them a fucking dime to include. It would just be a couple extra days of work, but would have made this collection a hell of a lot more worth it. It made fans a ton more happy and definitely would have had me not making this video right now being as fucking annoyed as I am right now. First up, back in the early 90s, they made Super Mario Bros. comics. Hell, they made Nintendo comics. Why couldn't you include those? It's not like they really sell them anymore. Make the full scans of them. I mean, think about it. There's tons of comics that you can read online. Why couldn't they include them on there? Make that something that you could unlock, that you could get from the, like, as soon as you pop that disc into the game. You know, something that you can just read through and just look at. Granted, it may be on TV, but who cares? It's just cool that you'd be able to see it there. They also had the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Now granted, they have it on DVD, but not, why not include some clips or even just a couple episodes from that show on there? It would be cool to be able to see that because there's a lot of kids, like younger kids, that didn't get to enjoy that whenever, you know, it was actually ranked. So it's not like it's on air right now or anything. They don't even have a Super Mario Brothers cartoon anymore that's, like, on air. So why not include some of those? That was something a lot of people that are big Nintendo fans enjoyed whenever they were growing up. And I sure as shit would have been happy just to have a couple of them on there. So, yeah, that would have been a lot nicer than having nothing. Okay, since this is essentially Super Mario Bros. All-Stars, why did, couldn't they include the original NES versions of the games? You know, it, granted, they have the graphically updated versions, and they could have included the Game Boy Advance version, which is something that they should have included, but they didn't, as we all know. But why not include the original NES versions? Just for the sheer hell of it. Like I said, it doesn't take up much space. Just fucking have it on there. I mean, all it is is a ROM. That's all that they put on there. It wasn't like they put some extra fucking polish into it or something. You know, it's the same exact resolution and everything. It's not like they made it fit your widescreen TV. No, same exact fucking format as it would have been on the NES and SNES and everything like that. So, yeah, I would have liked to have seen the original versions, but, you know, they're lazy. Artwork. Artwork is included in almost every single, like, limited edition, collector's edition, whatever version of the game that you get, there's always some kind of artwork. Well, Mario's been around for a really, really long time, so why not have, like, some of the art from the games? I mean, there's tons of it out there. You know, it could have been art of, well, this is what it looked like whenever he was Jumpman for Donkey Kong. Here's some art from Super Mario Kart. This is from Super Mario RPG. This is from Super Mario 64. This one's from Super Mario Sunshine and stuff like that. These are enemies that we never got to use. These are, are like, the sketches that we had originally thrown out before the game actually went into production. Just all types of stuff that they could have had. You know, it would just be nice to be able to see that stuff. And all this is pictures. That's really it. But it would have meant a lot more to, like, big-time fans. Because we're supposed to be celebrating an iconic video game character. Yet we're not getting anything to celebrate. Awesome, huh? Now, when I started thinking about the amount of space that was available on the disc, I also started thinking, well, what else could they have fit? Well, this is his 25th anniversary. Why not put Super Mario 64 on there? Maybe put the DS version on there, so then you could have multiplayer. Make it so that that version, if you played it on the Wii, was available online for play. That would have been really cool. Or how about this? Super Mario Sunshine. I mean, did you see the GameCube disc? They're really small. That information could have fit right on there. Hell, they could even put Luigi's Mansion on there for shits and giggles. You know, games like that, they have tons of Mario games in the catalog that they just did not bother with whatsoever, and I think it's a shame that, you know, fans are missing out on an opportunity, Nintendo especially is missing out on an opportunity. I mean, granted, yeah, you know, it's something that they would probably have to hike up the price, but at least it would have been worth it because it would have just been, like, overflowing with content, and it would really have lived up to, well, 25th anniversary, because that's what it was really all about. How about this? How about having some video interviews with the creators? Have the subtitles at the bottom, just talking about, like, all the different ideas, you know, what the creative process was. Have, like, a behind-the-scenes look, you know, of the developers actually working on the game. Stuff like that actually means a lot to fans because, you know, we get to play the game and enjoy the game, but we don't get to understand, like, the thought process. We don't get to understand the work that actually goes into it. And a lot of times that gets people more invested 
into the product that they're so into because they get to understand it from, you know, the gameplay standpoint and a fan standpoint, and also from the development cycle of it. Those are things that actually mean a lot to people. Hell, those are reasons why some people go on to make games is because they're like, wow, I would love to do that. That would be so cool. Or they even get ideas from doing stuff like that. And what do they do? They don't bother with that at all. But gee, they include a couple sentences about the games. <gasps> Hooray. Okay, they could also have a gallery of all the Nintendo collectibles that had Mario. Because, I mean, throughout the years, whenever I was little and growing up, there was Mario everything. I had Mario shampoo. I had a little Mario box that I put all of my stuff inside of. I had action figures. I had little racing cars. I had tons of toys with Mario on it. There was t-shirts. There was anything that you could really have, you know, in general. They put Mario on it, so why not include like a bunch of those collectibles and have them shown off? I mean, grand, yeah, it's just a gallery of them, but it'd be kind of cool just to see some of that stuff. And might even be a way that they could get ideas for like, wow, a lot of people were interested in this. Let's remake that and bring it back out, because fans might actually buy that again. So, yeah, they could have had it, but again, they didn't. Essentially, what this all boils down to is it was a missed opportunity, okay? This... And this, and this, this does not warrant $30 whatsoever. Even if I pay $20, you want to know what? It's still not going to be worth it. And here's why. This is supposed to be a 25th anniversary, okay? A celebration of one of the biggest things that Nintendo ever graced the gaming world with, and that was Mario. We got this, not this. We got this, just a nicer packaging. That's really about it. That's the thing that pisses me off so much about it is that this is a company that has made some of the best games in the entire world. They're not idiots, okay? They're not idiots by a fucking long shot. They make amazing games that transcend, like, all age brackets, okay? I'm in my 20s. I still enjoy Mario as much as I did back whenever I was five, all right? You know, you don't have to just be like, well, I'm too old to play Mario. No, you can pick it up and enjoy it just as much as any other little kid or even somebody even older than you could. It's an awesome franchise, and it deserves a hell of a lot fucking better than this cheap piece of shit here. And that's the reason why I'm so irritated by it. Grant, there's going to be fans that are going to say, well, you, fuck you. You can't say stuff like that about Nintendo. Like, no, if you're a real fucking fan, you will stand up for the shit that you actually care about. You won't just fucking accept how things are. If it's not up to the standards that you, the fucking fan, okay, me, I'm the fan too. If it's not up to our standards, then yeah, we have the right to say something about it. Because here's the thing, if you're willing to accept bullshit, okay, they'll just keep on giving you bullshit. That's all there is to it. Things don't get better unless you say something, and that's why the fuck I make videos like this. And that's one of the reasons why I actually get heavily invested into this kind of stuff, is because I give shit. And that's why I also make them, is because other people have the fucking right to know. You guys right now, you know, a lot of you subscribers, you know, a lot of you guys actually comment about this stuff, you talk about this stuff with me, you send me messages about it, and I appreciate a whole bunch. If any of you bought this, definitely say something below. I mean, hell, some of you could actually disagree with me, but to be honest, I think that this was something that should have been a lot more monumental, a lot bigger, a lot better. I mean, there are so many things that they could have had in addition to it, and they did not. You know, it, hell, it's not even so much the fact that it's $30. It's the fact that it's it's something that they put so much effort into throwing out there, and they didn't really give you much bang for your buck at all. And what's more messed up is that we're going to be celebrating Zelda's, uh, The Legend of Zelda's 25th anniversary. Are they even going to bother doing anything with that? Because they haven't announced shit. You know, it's just kind of messed up to think about Mario is 25th anniversary, yes. Mario is a much bigger gaming icon than Link is. But it's something that they should also definitely put like a ton of work into. Are they going to? Who knows? But the thing is that this was free when I was younger. This cost me $30 plus tax. And this is what I technically bought with a couple of songs in addition to it. And a little fucking history book that doesn't have much of shit except for pictures and barely any text. So, yeah. I hope that next time that they decide to do something like this, charge the full price and give us a whole bunch of stuff with it. A whole bunch of things that the fans deserve and a whole bunch of things that your 
flagship character your best franchise deserves, because quite frankly, well, he deserves it.